I sincerely hope you're enjoying this video series. I'm having a lot of fun recording these sessions for you. I design and build sales systems. So I can talk about this all day long. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Now, you're profitable at 100 interactions. However, how do you increase that number without compromising the customer experience? In the last video we did together, I talked about the most common route that founders take to free themselves from a sales role, that being they hire a replacement. If you watched that video, you'll know I wasn't super excited by that method. I'll post a link in the description below in case you want to review that discussion. Let's talk about the alternative, the option that nobody is talking about. Meet your replacement, the sales system. Familiar with phrases like sales process, sales funnel, sales cycle. Good, then you're halfway to understanding a sales system. You'll catch me interchanging between the two words because their meaning is rather similar. Compared to a process, a system implies a greater scale, more end-to-end, -end, encompassing more things. A sales system spells out the formula to making a customer in a clearly understood sequence. If you serve small business, you may require 15 customer interactions to make a customer. If you're dealing with enterprise, it could be 25 upwards. To make the journey fun, we group these interactions into an early, middle, and an end game. You, the founder, are no longer the experience. The high-performing salespeople from enterprise companies are no longer the experience. Instead, sales is a liberalized process that more than one person can contribute towards making a sale. Tom and you are no longer responsible for taking the sale from A to Z. If staff know the formula, you can predict the odds of making a customer. So for example, if 20 prospects enter the sales system, you can calculate the conversions in the early, the middle, and the end game and determine that you can create eight customers. Imagine the sales system as like a dashboard of dials. By turning a dial, you make an improvement. It's not unheard of to increase sales by 25% by turning a dial. That means that without re-engineering your business or substituting staff, you can improve sales. Another benefit of a sales system is it augments your workforce. The best people are working on high value tasks and other tasks can be carried out by folk with less experience. The intellectual property of how the customer is made is in the sales system. The salespeople only need to understand the part of the system where they're contributing. So, what have you learned in this video? Hmm. If you don't sit down right now and design an experience, you will be in your business for the rest of your life because you are the experience. You can tell your friends and family how important you are and that nobody else can do God's work but you'll never take that holiday. And when it comes time to sell your business, you'll only achieve a fraction of the price because the buyer will claim that the business can't run without you. If what I'm talking about is making sense, let's jump into the next video together and continue the discussion. In a moment, I'm going to explain to you how to design an experience using a framework called the four Qs. But before I do, I want to describe a few more benefits that you can expect should you decide to run frictionless. If you take my advice, freeing the founder of a sales role is just the start. Click on the link here or below in the description and let's discuss these benefits in the next video. I'm sure by now you're starting to form your own opinions. Please drop me your questions and comments below. I'd like to hear from you. And of course, everything we talked about today is covered in the book. If you want to grab a copy, visit runfrictionless.com. See you in the next video.